Welcome to the Fogelnest Files. My name is Jake Fogelnest. I am a professional. First of all, if you're listening to this podcast, stop because it's a video podcast today. You could go right now to youtube.com slash earwolf and watch it. This is a podcast that has been uh, in a hair. Look, podcasting is not a visual medium, except today it is. We're, uh, we're doing the Fogelnest Files live on uh, the Video Podcast Network, uh, recording this on Thursday, May 2nd. So if you're watching right now live, you can send some tweets to at Jake Fogelness. Hey, if you're listening to this later, you can still send tweets to at Jake Fogelness. I'm very active on social media, and I'll be happy to chat with you. But we'll try to respond to some tweets live. Uh, on the show today, I'm going to make fun of Chuck Woolery because that's long overdue on this show. Uh, we've got the Laverne and Shirley cartoon show. We'll deal with that. And my guests are Howard Kulop from Who Charted. Who Hello. Who Charted. Vogelnest Files edition. Did it, yeah. Am I charting? Uh, yes, yes, absolutely. Here's what, uh, first first out the gate, there was one brief shining moment where I had the most comedy credits in the history That's of Who true. Charted. Right. But it was quickly taken away from me by Paul F. Tompkins. Paul F. Tompkins. Just immediately took it back. The mighty which, Paul F. Tompkins. Which is fair, I guess. He, he plays so much that he just is naturally going to have the most points. You know what he is? He's like that guy that um, studied uh, the uh, Press Your Luck board. Remember that guy? Do you ever hear about this dude? There was a, uh, yes. Yeah, there's a, there was a, a, I guess it's safe to call him a big time nerd. There was a big time nerd. Game show nerd. Yeah, he's a game show nerd who like paused his VHS player uh, and memorized the patterns on Press Your Luck, went on the game show, he beat the system. That's Paul F. Tompkins. He's beating the podcast system. And it, it also points out how easy it was to beat the system back in the day. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> All you needed was a, 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 a VCR with a flying erase head. Yeah. yeah. Um, how are you guys? Thank you for, for doing this first uh, video podcast. I'm really happy to be here. I like you. I like you too. I like you very much. Like Not just as like a person, but as a spirit. Oh, that's really wow. nice. Yeah. Well, how do you feel about me, Howard? I love you as a musician and an actor. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you. I'm so glad you brought that up because I have been trying to get... I've been playing with the Bacon Brothers. And, oh, oh, nice. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Uh, uh, Steve Bacon and Larry Bacon. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Oh, those guys. Bacon Brothers. Oh, those yeah. different oh. Bacon Brothers. Di- okay. Yeah. Oh, were you th- oh, you were thinking of Kevin Bacon and his brother. No, yeah, it's yeah, different yeah. guys. I've been playing with them. Oh, yeah. and we have a gig at the Echoplex, and oh, I would wow. like to uh, put you on the guest list. Half price. I would like that. Yeah. I would like come, that. Come come down. We're so doing... what is the band called then? Is this like Bacon in the Nest or Bacon. what? It is. It's exactly what it's called. It's called Bacon in the Nest. Okay, good. And we're great. <laughs> we're really, really good. One of the most uh, important jazz fusion trios that you've ever seen. Oh, oh jazz fusion. Yeah. Wow. We're... What are you fusing it with? We're just kind of fusing it with uh, with life. Oh, or Pan Asian flavors. Bacon. <laughs> B- bacon wrap jazz. It's uh, that. That's a thing. That's probably one of them internet memes, right? Where it's like there's going to be some photo of uh, oh a saxophone, like a the... sachimo or something. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. 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 And uh, uh, yeah, it, 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 it wrapped in bacon. Jack I don't like Pastoria it. slapping some bacon. Uh, you can uh, you can send us uh, tweets at Jake Fogelnest. I will respond to them. Tune in. Right. You, if you're tuned into this, you're tuned in. So I don't need to tell you where to go. Right. Yeah. Right. And I guess I don't need to tell people to follow along with the videos at. Uh, youtube.com slash the Fogelness Files because they'll just put this up on the internet. They this is watch, amazing. They're going to watch them when we watch them. This is how your show should be done all the time. I know. Stretch. Cost prohibitive. Cost prohibitive, I think. Right. But uh, here, let's. you want to check out the uh, the first video? Absolutely. we got a monitor over here. I, I guess the uh, the first video uh, is an ad for Watts Club Mozambique. I don't think it needs much setup. It's, <laughs> it's just... Uh, Already like it. Yeah. Watts Club Mozambique. Let's just take a look at this. Ladies, you know when it comes to the best in exotic dancing, oh Watch Club Mozambique 8406 Finko is the place for you. <laughs> Ladies, Watch Club Mozambique male dancers out there just oh. for you oh. and you only. At Watch Club Mozambique, you'll see capital punishment. <laughs> Another level. Oh, awesome. Sudden impact. <laughs> Strictly ghetto. <laughs> hey, there's, there's Juicy. A- that looks like another oh. strip stripper group up there. Joy Rock. <laughs> Absolute. Sweet. Rock Hard. No. It's Midnight all the same Lover. four guys, though. No? <laughs> Royal Luscious. 
<laughs> they keep showing the same guys and with the different social names. lovers. Those are different dudes. <laughs> it all happens every Wednesday through Sunday at Watts Club, Mozambique, 84 6 Finkel. Exotic male dancing at its best every Wednesday through Sunday at Watts Club, Mozambique. Oh, Ladies, man. come see the number one group Zed Watts, Capital Punishment, and Social Lovers. I, I thought I, Capital Punishment yeah. was Capital Punish Meat. <laughs> Oh, that's In a nice. way, it is. That's yeah. catchy. Um, th- I guess my favorite is that it happens Wednesday through Sunday. Uh, so because Monday and Tuesday they have improv shows. I oh, guess. that's right. Yeah. That's right. Have, and those oh, are the yeah. same. The, the improv groups have the same names they as do. the strippers. <laughs> like they're not different from UCB Herald teams. I do want to point out. Can we cut back to the video for a second? Because yeah, that, one of these please, groups please. is is dancing. I'll just show this again. Is dancing with a Chucky doll. Yeah. Okay, I wasn't sure what I was saying. Yeah. yeah. Rock wow. Hard. Midnight Lover. Midnight Lover. Royal Luscious. Which could be any of these groups. They're dancing with a <laughs> Chucky doll for some reason. He's hard to recruit for your strip group. Strip um, club group. <laughs> maybe it's the name of, like, like the Nutcracker. It's the name of the dances. Right. Okay, yeah, that makes sense. It could be that. Do you get a program if you go to Watts Club? I, Mo- I expect one. I have. I save all my playbills from what's it called? <laughs> Watts Club Mozambique. Watts Club Mozambique. Yeah, actually, I used to go there when it, it was uh, it was down a little further on Fankel. Right. It, it was uh, eighty four twenty two Fankel. The original Watts Club Mozambique. Yeah, that's right. Where I used to go. Yeah, yeah, that's it. Was it, it changed? The vibe changed when they got the bigger space. Right. 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 New management. Yeah. Yeah. It's like Largo. <laughs> it's like Largo. <laughs> <laughs> um, I I would lo- I mean I would I would love to see any of those dance groups. I would too. I would Absolutely. love to. I just would love to be there. Like I would too. Right now. Yeah. It, 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 I bet you it's a. I bet you this. Like I bet you it's a fun night of entertainment. It's not. It's not just like sexy yelling and stuff. It's, sure, you know, sure. Like, but it, it's got to have show. a healthy amount of that. But oh, you know yeah. they got to entertain. Yeah. You know, and uh, and like nine out of ten of those guys are in the uh, House of Representatives <laughs> in, Boz- in Mozambique. They are, yes. Is hey, that- the Stones record there. Is that that's what I know in Mozambique? Right, yeah. The, the Stones, Stones go down there the to Stone- record, and that's where um, Mick and Keith, at the end of a recording session, they go to Watts Club Mozambique <laughs> to just kind of chill out and relax. Right, enjoy the men. Just enjoy the men. Rip and- off those hip movements. Yeah. There you go. They um, stole it. Uh, you want to see some really good comedy? Just like a really. <laughs> Great, just great comedy. Yes, there is a there's a I've guy. Ne- oh, go ahead. You've never seen a what? Well, not on the internet. No, okay. go ahead. Well, this is this is an internet comedian. This is, I think, just like I would say that he's the number one internet comedian out there. Ooh. Okay. Uh, and uh, I, I, I you're not talking Twitter comedian. No, you're not no. Talking... This guy, he just he has a series of comedy acts that he has put on YouTube. I've got a couple of. It's them. not me, is it? No, it's not okay, you. <laughs> I was getting nervous. This is a guy named Daniel Songer, who a couple of years ago I became familiar with him, and he is. Uh, uh, well, I, here I'll just show you a little bit of his work, and then we'll talk more about him. But this is uh, this is Daniel Songer, and he's just a he's just a top notch comedian. Hey guys, you know, I mean, my God, here, what are we into the 21st <laughs> century? You know, I mean, my God. But I'm telling you one thing, my friends: century after century after century, it all remains the same. Man and woman, we love oh. sex. Sex, oh, sex, oh. we love it, don't we guys? Sex, sex, but one thing, one thing, my friend, <laughs> yes, precious, yes, it's yes. the first time ever I saw your face, the first time, you remember the first time, and man, that will always stick that, that, that time when we lost our virginity, it was like the greatest time of our life. I mean, you guys remember that, you know, well, man, I used to go to roller skating rinks, buddy, and, uh, man, I met this nice girl there, and, oh, she was so hot, and before I knew it, we were out in the back seat of a Ford Pinto. Can you believe it? I'm making love in the back seat of a Ford Pinto, man! I love him, man. He's just got a high energy, good attitude. He's saying stuff that's relatable. I guess he's like, what are we into? Centuries! <laughs> this is the first thing he oh did. Oh my god. I like that. Centuries. That's like the last place in town they'll let him talk. Like, there's no <laughs> inside place anywhere in town there's left. No just inside. go do it over there. Over there in the <laughs> Clearing. He tried his church. Yeah. He tried the local moose lodge. Yeah. <laughs> he, tried he rented the- a a a, a uh, 
storage facility. Still, they kicked him out. You know what, out. man? It's tough to find a good venue. It's, it's I true. think he found the appropriate venue for the work that he's doing. Yeah. Yes, and I tell you, even for that venue, he, he was too big. <laughs> no, yeah, yeah. <laughs> for, for out in the field, he was too big. If, but you know what, though? Like, if he was at Madison Square Garden or something, his comedy is larger than life. Right. That's what. I, that's uh, yeah. the thing about him. Like he's, Dane Cook. He does like, a, it's like a Dane Cook. He's very physical. Mm -hmm. It's larger than life comedy. It's arena comedy. It is. It's arena-based comedy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, you want to take, here, I, I have another, uh, uh, just this is, this is, that was Comedy Act 12 that he uh, uploaded to the internet. This is Comedy Act 143. Same club or different club? It's, um, <laughs> you know what? It's, uh, it's it's the smaller room at the same club. Oh, geez. Small, so okay. you can see this is a smaller room at the same Ladies club. Ladies and gentlemen, comedian, entertainer, no. Daniel Songer. And I should point out, no. he is not just a comedian. He is also an entertainer. Okay, that wasn't clear before. Thank you. Oh, dear. Oh, here he comes. Shh, 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 shh. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa. Comedian, entertainer. Daniel Songer! What did what was that? That was like a a, a wind me up twister, wasn't it? You know? He's doing crowd hey, work. This dance called the Jack Me Up. Jack me, jack me, oh, jack God. me up, you know? Just to be clear, that is, he did do a wind me up twister. He, he did. <laughs> and the Jack Me Up is a fun dance. Like he's, yeah, he's just having I fun. Guess. Jack me up, man, for comedy act. 143. You know, guys, you know, when a man is single and he goes on, you know, what, day after day, week after week, sometimes year after year being single, it's just Howard, it's you know harder like. and harder. I do. I, I, did I, I think I wrote this part of but his act. Once <laughs> you get a girl. Well, that's the thing about, uh, about you know, like kind of big time comedians is they often have writers very silently. Some guys, you know, he, right. Dan, you're one of Daniel's guys that he always runs his bits by, right? Exactly. And like if I say something funny, uh -huh. I'll be thinking like maybe I'll keep that for my act. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he, yeah. He'll corner me with cash. He'll whip out a wad of like Let hundreds. Let me buy that bit yeah, off slap of you. you but he'll go, the face. right now. Right now, decide right now. Oh, pressure. Or, it, or never. Wow. Now or never. You know, I think if you want to be a, a, a comedian on, on this guy's level, you got to kind of be ruthless. You got to be Suge yes, Knight about do. it. You do. He's the Suge Knight of high energy backyard comedy. Mm -hmm. A little bit about Daniel uh, Sager. This is this is from a video gum uh, interview. Uh, somebody had sent him some email questions. That, uh, uh, I was born in Michigan. I went to a college to be a robot and computer engineer. In 1990, I started my own company as a security contractor. I started writing poetry in 1984, and to this day, I have written three books of inspirational poetry available at danpoetman.com uh, 12 albums two screenplays <laughs> and over 100 <laughs> comedy acts total 132 uploads comedy acts yeah, he loves to count he likes counting what and I, I, you know I I, I challenge Louis C.K. Like, how many comedy acts has he done? Like, he just has, he puts out like four special. This guy's written 132 separate comedy acts. How do you quantify a comedy act? Yeah. What is that? The first thing's first. You get your friend uh, to uh, set up a, a, a camera in the backyard. Sure. Okay. <laughs> okay. Second thing's first. Second thing, you you, uh, you upload it to YouTube. Right. right? All right. When does it when does it stop becoming a bit and it becomes an act? <laughs> <laughs> I, I look, man. I'm not. Uh, it's hard to tell. Boy, yeah, but he, I, he's been prolific, so that's that's good. He knows he's very what, prolific, he and, knows he's, what and he he's also doing. has a serious side too. Jake, yeah. how have you not bought his books of poetry yet? Inspir I'm sorry, inspirational. Poetry. Inspirational books of poetry. You know what? It's uh, they're bought I'm, up. They're yeah, probably they're hard to get. Sold out. out. They wow. are sold out. eBay. Okay. I'm waiting. I'm waiting for the uh, the uh, audio books. Actually, <laughs> I'm waiting for the audio books. I'm it, gonna look at uh, at Twitter. You guys use Twitter, right? Yeah. Oh, absolutely. You could tweet everybody right now. Yeah. Live. Oh, uh, let's do it. Uh, somebody, uh, let's see, at Brandon Leedy writes, love watching the Fogelness Files live, though it could use more, though it could use more LaCroix beverages, hashtag 2.30 PST. Ah. <laughs> and I do, I, I, let's take this opportunity right now to remind people that LaCroix is the official beverage of 2.30 PST. Mm -hmm. And of women. And of women. And, you know what, though? It's good. It's a good, it's got a light I flavor like it. to it. It's not quite soda, but it's not quite soda. I will say this. If I ever had a son and he was French, I would name him LaCroix. LaCroix why would, came out. Wait, why would, if you had a son, why would he then be French? Uh, the, if I, I guess if he wife? was born in France, yeah, or his mom was French or heavily Frenchly influenced. <laughs> <laughs>
heavily Frenchly influenced is my favorite favorite ABC album. Um, the New Romantic. Yeah, very new, very new romantic, which we will discuss later. We will get to the New Romantic period of the Fogelness Files later it's, in this podcast. It's impossible to compose a tweet and and do this. At it the is. Same it's time. very hard. It's yeah. hard to like. I understand we're live. We should be interacting with sure. people, but it's very hard to do this because then it's I have tough. to stop. And read tweets. And you know what it is? I don't feel like I'm being present. I've got okay, people in okay, the room okay. with you. Okay. Right. I already okay. feel like I'm the least in touch with the camera. What's right. going I on? I haven't even camera. addressed the camera. I've been doing this podcast as if I normally do it, looking oh, at the guests. I've been I'll in look, that camera. Let me So you got the camera, camera seat. It wasn't oh, me, yeah. Kula. Cool when you get that camera. seat, you stare at it. In it. She They're loves it. Hey, to the camera. people that are just listening what? to this as a podcast, you're missing this right now. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. That was good. That was good. good um, yeah. I want to show uh, a, a guy right now. This is a very uh, recent news story. Uh, earlier this week, my friend John Hendren uh, brought this to my attention. You know him on Twitter. He is Twitter user at fart, and uh, <laughs> and he sent this this news story to me, and we'll just take a look at it. And um, my heart, my heart kind of aches for this guy. Hard or fart? This is an unbelievable story, but it is true. A New Hampshire man says his trip to the carnival was a horror show that left him out $2,600. As New Hampshire Bureau Chief Michael Rosenfield shows us, the man says he was conned at a carnival by a carnival game. Henry Gribbom says he lost his life savings, $2,600, on a carnival game like this one. And all he has to show for it is this stuffed banana with dreadlocks. So you're expecting to win a few things and, you know, let the kids have a good time. Um, it just didn't turn out that way. Gribbom says he attended a Manchester carnival run by Fiesta shows and wanted to win an Xbox Connect at a game called Tubs of Fun, where contestants toss balls into a tub. When he practiced, he says it was easy. I like they had to clarify what that was, too. They're like, uh, a game called Tubs of Fun. That's where contestants toss balls into tubs, in case you haven't, couldn't figure it out. <laughs> yeah, not the sexual fetish. It's just a carnival game. And also, go buy your Xbox Connect like, at a GameStop. Like, come on. How are you losing $2,600? Let's, let's finish the story. Changed when he started playing winner. for the prize, and the balls kept popping out. It's not possible that it wasn't rigged. Gribbum says he kept trying to win back his money by going double or nothing. He dropped $300. <laughs> okay, you know what? We need to get some B-roll for this. So um, <laughs> do you have the giant banana with dreadlocks? Oh, okay. yeah, yeah, do? I do. <laughs> okay, good. Um, why don't we do this? Why don't we get a shot of you with the giant banana and dreadlocks? Okay, in? okay. Your baby's adorable. Thank you. Ba he baby's takes after his mom. Yeah, so maybe you guys could go and just we'll just film you, you know, around the block with the the giant banana with dreadlocks and your child. Okay, that seems classy. Yeah, I think it'll be, it's gonna look really good. How's this? Should, should I should I put the child the banana in the carriage? I think do whatever you would do normally. However, okay. you would normally carry around the uh, uh, banana. I with usually dreadlocks. put the baby on top of my head uh -huh. and the banana I wheel around in the carriage. Yeah, okay. Actually, maybe you should put the uh, the baby in the stroller because we, we're not really... Uh, it changes the story, doesn't yeah, it? Yeah, it changes yeah. the story. Uh, it's not realistic. But okay. Just a few minutes. Then says he went home to get $2,300 more and soon lost no. all that as no. well. He went and came what back. That game. I mean, I've tried it myself. I've done it once, missed probably 20 times. Fiesta Show says the game is run by an independent contractor who's worked for Fiesta for years. It's interviewing the contractor Isn't that to the see what guy who introduced Are there any story? scams at all with any of the games? Not that I'm aware of. We've had a lot of these game operators with us for years. The traveling carnival is now setting up here in Derry, New Hampshire, but you will not see tubs of fun. Fiesta says the independent contractor that runs the game is not allowed to set up while an investigation is taking place. Because you get caught up in the whole double <laughs> Yeah, let's, okay. It's just like, all right, we need to do an interview uh, right now. We got, It's very important. We want to, you know, just kind of get like a, a head-on shot of your story. So why don't we just put, uh, he's okay back there, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, he's fine. Okay, oh. great. Oh. Double or nothing. I've got to win my money back. <laughs> Henry child. says he went back the next day to complain, and the man running the game gave him back $600. Henry split with the banana and the cash and filed a report with Manchester PD. 
For once in my life, I happen to become that sucker. In Derry, New Hampshire, what? Michael Rosenfield. Oh, I don't WBZ think News. that was the only well, time. Well, you got to admit it, he has a certain amount of persistence. That's right. And, you know, we'll see. And where a this banana goes. with dreadlocks. You <laughs> know, <laughs> wasn't How a totally many people waste of have that. You know, <laughs> <laughs> like, uh, when uh, the work. local news people are, cannot contain themselves, when they are giggling at you. That's because they, they own the concession, they own that thing. Oh, they own Tubbs of Fun? <laughs> They're yeah, behind the it? They people. rigged it? Yeah. This is a big conspiracy then. They're what? using the news to, to, to publicize their game they want everybody to play. Wow. Oh. Wow, this goes deeper than I thought. Yeah, yeah. Um, I, I mean, here's the thing. I know he was trying to win an Xbox, but I don't think that... I mean, I think it's very possible that I could lose $2,600 just trying to win a banana with dreadlocks. I want that thing. That thing is fun. There's got to be another way to it's get enchanting. it, though. I'm just I don't saying. know. Have you ever seen one before? I bet you could get that one for $600 from him. I, I mean, I, no, but I want to win it. I oh, want the you satisfaction win of winning. It. Like, I see, I see. Here, because it's fun. Because you want to take it. I don't, yeah, I don't want to just like, you know. Yeah. Anyone could buy it. You Anyone sure, could sure. buy it. Yeah. But, it, but it's a banana, which is fun. Oh. And then it's got dreadlocks, and that makes me think of reggae, sure. and that's fun. Right, right, right. So it's just the most fun I could ever imagine. Like, I bet you he loves that banana with dreadlocks more than that baby. Oof. I bet he I bet does. does. I bet that banana talks more, too. That kid seems to have no personality whatsoever You're right. just sitting there. Well, you tell me. Who has more personality, this, this uh, dumb kid? It's just kind of sitting there like a like a dummy yeah. in his stroller. He's gonna get ripped off too. Yeah, or, or that high banana, <laughs> or that banana who's been toking a little ganja. Uh, um, what what went wrong? What he just got caught up in the moment, right? Uh, yeah, but then he left location <laughs> and returned. <laughs> that part now, is amazing. At any point of ent- like maybe entering the ATM pin, that's where you would go. Do I really want to go back to the carnival with this money? Something Same. got him amped up even more. Like somebody talks some mess to him, and then he's like, I'm going home, and I'll be right back. <laughs> like it, he got even more intense. I, I just think that that's a, a successful carnival barker. That's, True, that yeah. is what a carnival barker is supposed that to do. That guy knows what he's doing. Yeah. I'm surprised he gave shout it back. Shout out to those guys. <laughs> yeah, shout out to You guys Barney. are pros. <laughs> <laughs> um, Your heroes. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't know, but that banana is pretty fun. That guy, I feel for him. Do you though? I mean, I feel for him in the sense that now it's like a story on the internet that people. I feel he's for the banana dreadlock. Yeah. I feel for his son more than anything. That Eddie son does. is the reason he's doing crazy stuff. <laughs> that son's driving him nuts. The son won't talk to him. The son's showing nothing. <laughs> I blame the kid. I blame the kid too. Much Don't like have your children. Your father blamed you, Howard. Well, probably. <laughs> probably. Uh, we're going to take a break. Ooh. We got to take a break. We got to do some commercials. Got to pay the bills. Okay. That's what the, yeah, I mean, we do. We got to pay the bills. Mm-hmm. You got to keep the lights on. Yeah, yeah. We got to. Can you pay my bills? Can you pay my podcast bills? Now we got to pay for that song, too. <laughs> Thanks a lot. <laughs> The Desti- we gotta, now we owe Destiny's Child to the Publishing. Left, to the left. Oh no! Please don't sing any Beatles. <laughs> We're gonna take a break. Uh, back with. Uh... <laughs> when are we coming back? Yesterday. <laughs> back in a moment with Howard and Coolop on the uh, the Fogelnest Files. Back here on the uh, Fogelnest Files. My name is Jake Fogelnest. I am a professional. Uh, I got a tweet here from at Kick Puncher. <laughs> he says, uh, "I don't feel bad for that guy because you can't put a price." On a giant Rastafarian banana. That's it's true. true. It's true. It's true. But it, there now is a price, though. Yeah. 2300 it's, Yeah, actually you can. It's about 2300 <laughs> bucks. Uh, and uh, yeah, I, I just, uh, I, I hope that ends well. I feel like I think it will. I think it will. I, I hope the banana will. doesn't get sent back to Jamaica. <laughs> <laughs> I hope the banana's okay. Oh my okay. gosh. Celia and Gonzalez of, of banana. Celia and Gonzalez of banana. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, I appreciate an Elian Gonzalez reference. Absolutely. Uh, shout out to him. Shout, shout out, out to Elian Gonzalez. <laughs> shout out to Pitbull. Shout out to the uh, Cuban American franchises. All of them. <laughs> franchises? Like what? You know, like uh, uh, Cuban schnitzel. Cuban schnitzel? <laughs> Uh, yeah. The Cuban wiener schnitzel? I'm pretty sure. You're pretty sure? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Cuban Howard. bell. You Cuban know. bell? Wait, is that, so that's like the Cuban taco bell. Right, but it's not Mexican. It's Cuban. It's Cuban. Okay. Okay. Yeah. And uh, what? Uh, is there another one? Like uh... Oh, uh, Cube FC. Cube FC. <laughs> what yeah. about um? What about Mark Cuban? 
Oh, absolutely. To Mark Cuban as well. Shout out to Mark Cuban. Owner yeah, yeah. of the Dallas Mavericks and star of Shark Tank. <laughs> He's the best. He's the, the one Nicki, true star? He's the Nicki Minaj of Shark Tank. If Is she, he? If she's the best judge on Idol, he's the best judge on Shark Tank. Nicki Minaj and uh, Mariah Carey, they just don't get along. No. That's that's about right, though, guys. Right. I think it I is, I think too. that's fitting. Do yeah. you think? Who, yeah. Who, let me ask you this. Yeah. Whose team are you on? Are you team Nicki Minaj or are you team Mariah Carey? Nicki. I am, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm without a doubt team Nicki. I think her judging's great. Yeah. And I like the things she says. I like the way she says them. She's a playful and creative and smart individual. <laughs> and stylish. Howard Howard weighing in on Nikki. Actually, you know yeah. what? That'd be a good thing. I think there should be another podcast that you do. And it's just, it's a very <laughs> short podcast. You put it out once a week. And it's just Howard weighs in on Nicki Minaj. And just your I thoughts on Nicki so. Minaj every week. I think, I think that's right. Okay, I'll do it. And you guys do the same for Mariah. But I will. I will. <laughs> Okay. And that we'll put them out on the same day. Right. And we'll uh, we'll see who does uh, bigger downloads. Yeah, Mine yeah. will be better. Yours will be better. All right. Yep. Because <laughs> you don't need a shit talk. Nobody who likes Mariah is like a podcast person. <laughs> <laughs> the podcasting community has not embraced Mariah Carey. It or is... Mariah, and she's really stressed yeah. about it too. Uh, right. She's yeah. like, I, she's Should just be. like, I just, I wish I could get like the chartists to to yeah. like me. I, yeah. you know, I, I, every time I, you know, Jimmy Pardo he says the meanest things about me. I like yeah. the idea of like yeah, Mariah yeah. Carey really invested in yeah, alternative yeah. comedy. <laughs> she's like, Nick, I got all your people. Your Nick Cannon comedy people. Yeah, I, I want the alt. I people. want. Why won't Andy, Andy Kindler respect me? Like I, it's, it's, yeah. I was gonna say I was gonna throw his MTV show, but I was gonna say Wet and Wild, and that's not right. Nick Cannon's, MTV yeah, his show? his old uh, Wild Now. I was right? like, that's not right. Wet and Wild. Wet and Wild and Wild it out. Similar things. <laughs> similar things. Water parks and and going nuts in Central Park. <laughs> Speaking of going nuts, I got a clip here. Our friend Brett uh, uh, gave me this earlier this week. Uh, Are we talking Brett starred the engineer? Brett starred the engineer, oh, yes. starred. Uh, here, and he, he just said, you have to check this video out. It's a bunch of people. They're in a new age community, and they're trying to create force fields. And, and I said, it. please send that to me. I want to see that. So this is... He got this from his brother, I'm sure. This is a bunch of people um, on a beach, and they're... I, I don't know. Here, we'll just watch. Hopefully I can see some D. <laughs> it's from a, uh, a documentary oh, film. Oh, good. Starting with Yellow Bamboo. <laughs> One of the many bizarre workshops featured in three miles north of Mulcahy. Breathe in. Pull the energy in. <laughs> Put it down. And push the energy out the hand. Big breath. More power. More power. Yeah. More passion. More power. Big. Look into the hands. Good. Big bucks. No way. Good. Good. <laughs> yes. Like this. Good. Good. Good, Magnus. Right, now I have to get into this too. I, but that's what I was going to say, cool up. I was going to say, do you know what this is? No, but now I got to figure it out and spend money on it. Everything you got in there. Oh, yeah, this would be a good class for you. We can do it. Hold on. Let's go. The, the stand up comedian who was in the, in the woods, he probably took this to get his air up. Whoa. Whoa. They, they just arukened him. <laughs> Is that what that is? They blew him down with their breath? You ready? Yeah. Yes, come here. This is your basic street you fighter moves. And Magnus and Rebecca, you pre Magnus. prepare her. Of course, Magnus. Of course there's a guy named Magnus. <laughs> oh, wow. Yeah. So... What is it? So like beach fight club? <laughs> What are they, what's the purpose of this? <laughs> I, I, I know okay. there's a lot of questions like what's happening, what's the purpose of this? I have no answers. But you can see this documentary three miles uh, north of oh, Malcolm, and but, I'm gonna see this documentary. You but better cool, believe it. You're, you're. I am into spiritual things as yes, you are. Yes, We've yes. talked about this. Would you do this? Do you want to create force fields? I oh, mean, do, do I want to create force fields? Of course I do. Do you want to try it right now? Okay. All right. I'm That's getting right. under the table. This could be dangerous. <laughs> what, do, what do we... Well, I just assume do what they're doing, okay. which is just, you know... Isn't Tila Tequila doing this now, too, on the internet? Like... Really? I think she's touching other girls' boobs. That's a different oh, there thing. You go. Yeah, there's boobs. Is there... Yeah, I don't know. I mean, so I don't know. I... I th I, but they're into it, and I'm just wondering. Like, I feel. I guess I feel better. Do you feel better? I mean, I guess you have to come at me. Come I, at her. I, 
Yeah. Ah. Yeah. Ah. I feel better. I feel okay. better. All I right. just, I it's just, I guess it's just a release, I know how to disarm right? it. Come at me with it. Okay. Okay. We're gonna, I'm going mean, to really come at oh, you. Oh, wait. Oh, it's got to be cool. Sorry. Oh, okay. Well, you can do you after. All right. Yeah. Yeah. All right. You look really nice today. Oh, thank you. Okay, Aww. Jake. Let me, let me, all right. I love your work. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? The disarming Howard Kramer once again. That's right. Very disarming. It shows you use the energy against itself. Don't try to fight it. Don't try to fight the energy. Don't you love my work? I do, but you're, uh, see, I can't even talk you know because what? your beauty makes my brain and my mouth have a fight okay. inside my skull. Okay. That's a great Funkadelic song. I like it. All right. <laughs> Your beauty I... makes my brain and my mouth have a fight. <laughs> Part five. Part five. <laughs> um, Chuck Woolery. Um, uh, he's yeah. the worst, right? Really? Yeah. He speaking is of, the worst. But speaking of caring about what the uh, comedy community thinks, he mm-hmm. is one that does. Oh, he has been uh, arguing with uh, with Tom Sharpling quite a bit. He argues uh, with John Daly, too, he argues, right? Well, I think he thinks that John Daly <laughs> is, is John golfer Daly. John Daly. <laughs> right, right, right. <laughs> which is really fun. I've, I've been blocked on Twitter uh, by Chuck Woolery. So why don't we all take a moment right now, if you're on uh, Twitter.com, why don't you tweet Chuck Woolery? And you just write, hey, Chuck Woolery, unblock Jake Fogelnest, P.S., at Sharpling, still thinks you're a wad. Uh, everyone wow. tweet that to Chuck Woolery right now, and then he'll get those tweets, and he'll be like, meh, I'm angry. And <laughs> then uh, and then we can all sh- uh, take a look together at some of Chuck Woolery's finest work, which is a, uh, a commercial for some terrible game show. For people that don't know, by the way, Chuck Woolery was the host of Love Connection in the 80s. He sort of was this... So great. It like was a great show. A great show. And he was like this Never game. saw one. You, you never no, saw a Love serious? Connection? I turned it away every time. Really? Every time. You just were like not interested? No. I was you like, turned what away? You turned the physical... I turned, physically <laughs> turned the TV? Or? I, yes. I need the TV in the gut <laughs> and turned it away. No, I, 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 every time it was on, I said, oh, I feel bad for these kids. I feel bad. <laughs> the people that had signed a release and understood that they were going to be on a like kind of a goofy game show, you felt yeah. bad for them. And I, yeah, I felt bad for the people that got jilted. It was expl- you thought it was exploitative or Yes. Well, Wow, I, I I mean, I, yeah, it was, wasn't it? But you know, it consider... wasn't a good show. We, we, yeah, we let's if we're gonna look back, it's like we're not trying to say that Love Connection was. Some... It just gave me a headache. I don't know about any of you're the rest right. of that. You're right. No, you're right. It's just I didn't want to see what was going on. Yeah, and you didn't. You didn't want to wait around two and two to. to and see? this is a man who would star in Scare Tactics. Yeah, I would go <laughs> on to be in Scare Tactics. Same same thing. People would turn it on. You know, I feel sorry for all these people and. But I never did. Yeah, I never did that two and two. You never. Yeah, you have no patience for that. No. Well, uh, speaking of exploitative, uh, this is Chuck Woolery doing an ad for another game show, and this is one of those situations where they're like, you know, it'd be fun, Chuck Woolery. Let's have him rap. Oh, jeez. Oh, Go! Check it out, Chuck W. Coming at you, tried and true, squeaky, freaky, cheeky, yo, back and two and two. Yeah, the chuck wagon is taking you home, so don't flip it, just kick it with the naturally stone. That's me, the big seat. On the Gazame Show, does that work? Can I tell you what, really? You want to talk smack? I say, snap, take it back to the whack shack, Jack. No phone. No, I'm in home. I'm a fucking lucky chucky and I'm naturally stone. Yo. Chuck Woolery naturally stoned the whole new reality from GSN in the house June 15th at 9.30 p.m. Naturally stoned, yo. That song too harshly? Mm -hmm. What year? Because, like, if that was 2011, that's hurting. But what if he he pulled that out in 86? It's not 86. (laughs) It is not. I mean, take a look at Chuck. Take a look at Chuck Woolery's face. He's not a hip-hop innovator. Are you sure? Yeah. This Six is, minutes, Chuck Willery, you're on. No, that, no, <laughs> no, I'm getting that wrong. It, it is. This is. This is. Li- this could be as recently as like last year. Uh, yeah, the, yeah, a, yeah. But yeah, GSN, the, the Game Show Network, did yeah. not exist in 1986. Jeez, I'm not, does it. it still exist now though? Is it yes, it does. it does. It does. There's good. They do good work over there. Yeah, I don't yeah, yeah. The game Password, no. yeah. Uh, just show pyramid. Them, just show old match games. That's all they have to do over there. <laughs> and that's it? what they do. Just show it. the match games. I was game. on board for match game, watched it all the time. Yeah, absolutely. There was something magical about it. We, uh, uh, we every year at the Del Close <laughs> Marathon in New York City at the uh, Upright Citizens Brigade, we do the uh, the match game, which is 4 o'clock in the morning. It's every idiot in a character. We play match game. And Paul yeah. Shear is Gene, Gene Rayburn, and it's real stupid. Well, back in the Sounds day fun. in L.A., 
uh, Jimmy Pardo did an amazing uh, match game out yeah. in UCB LA, and it's a shame that they don't keep doing it. I, I don't know. Nobody, sh- the match game should always be a thing that uh, is happening. I'm doing Paul F. Tompkins. Right yeah, because <laughs> there's always a Brit that'll be, uh, you know, there's, it's not that hard to find a Brit who's sloshed and ready to have if fun. There were still, <laughs> if there were still shows like that, I would ha- like I would have a much bigger career because I'd be a good oh, guest on be, those shows. Right. Like I'd be great on those kind of shows. Why? I think those shows are coming back around. Good, you that'd think? be great. Bring them back. Come on, bring them back. If Jay Moore is doing a show, a game show on Netflix, right? Uh, terrific. Come you, on, you could be the Brett Summers of of whatever's coming. That's all I've ever wanted. That's all I've ever wanted. <laughs> you could be the Brett Michaels of anything. <laughs> But can I be the Brett Gelman of anything? <laughs> of Whoa. human garbage? I'll be, I am the Brett Gelman <laughs> of human garbage. Yeah, human Let's see. garbage. Hey, Chuck Woolery, I'm looking at tweets right now. Unblock, unblock Chuck Woolery, and also you are the worst. More importantly, you are the worst. Gus uh, BJ wrote that. Sup, Gus? Uh, Gus uh, BJ. BW Carr, unblock Jake Fogelnest, and Sharpling still thinks you're a wad. Uh, hey, yeah, everyone uh, tweeting. To at Chuck Woolery, unblock Jake Fogelness. P.S. Sharpling still thinks you're a wad. Because he is. I mean, he's he he's he was the host of this game show, and now he's an insane, really like lunatic, almost Alex Jones level right wing Republican. He felt that way to me back in the day. Yeah, I mean we just back didn't in know. the Reagan era. He did turn that on and if only there were there was Twitter. Back in the '80s, when game show hosts were, you know, were king, like yeah. that. That's Twitter is a dangerous thing for a game show host. I think sure. that that's what we're. It would have ruined me, though. What do you mean? Well, if I had Twitter in the '80s, it would have ruined oh, me. I know. Yeah, I'm so glad the internet yeah. didn't exist in the in the way that it did when I was a teenager. I would it, 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 bad bad stuff. Would I happen. couldn't count to 140 in the '80s. <laughs> I picked that skill up recently. <laughs> in the recently. advent of Twitter. In the advent of Twitter. Right. Um, <laughs> Uh, speaking of young young people on the internet, this is one of my favorite internet young people. Uh, he is uh, a, a kid on YouTube uh, who I believe is, I forget his YouTube channel's name, but I think it's something like uh, uh, Toilet to the Extreme or something. <laughs> and he is, uh, I'll just, we'll just take a look at this young man. I'm, I, I'm, a, I'm a legitimate fan of his work and what he's doing. Hey, it's me. Toilet fan extreme, and I um I just saw Flushmate Zero One's to, um video for me, and I just want to say it made my day, and I'm really happy now because one I saw a Kohler toilet, and two he made the that video for me that I just saw, and I'm just gonna say thanks. Um, I didn't think he would be doing that, but it really really made me happy and the second thing is I just want to say I'm still part of the toilet community that I didn't have any time to make videos <laughs> and I, I've been in school yeah. so I- yeah, he's still part of the toilet community, Howard. Don't <laughs> worry. Wait, sure you I know. mean, I, I guess when you talked, when you brought him up, I didn't expect him to be a young boy. He's a young kid. Literally talking about Kohler Toilets, which is a brand of toilets. He is, well, let's keep going, because this is Toilet Fan Extreme. He's an extreme fan of toilets. He's still a part of the toilet community. And uh, let's... I haven't really been yeah. able to go to any new places and film toilets. But now that I'm in my parents, grandparents' house, I have been able to film toilets. Okay, so I'm going to do a full shot of the toilets in my grandparents' house. We're going to get a full tour right now. Here's the first one. It's a brand list. What? Because he's it's Toilet it's Fan Extreme. Why? Why? I like what's on the top of that toilet. It's a cool because toilet. Because 6.0 liters per flush, 1.6 gallon per flush. Oh. As you can see right there. No brand anywhere. <laughs> what? I, I like know. it. It's Texan uh, Specs, baby. I love it. it. It's Texan Specs, yeah. <laughs> He actually likes toilets. Hold on, I'm gonna open the system tank. Maybe well, yeah, he's, why found, are you, uh, he's found why, a community. This is why you don't get your kid a giant banana. <laughs> You encourage him too much. He's getting in there with happens. it too. It's not just a. He's not a cursory toilet to fan. Nothing. What's he looking for in there? No brick. No what? No brick? No, I guess okay, so. Yeah. There. Oops. Okay. He's also respectful here. of the space. He's putting things toilet. back. It's like it's like Godfather 2 when they hide the gun behind the toilet. It is, except instead of him hiding a gun, he's uploading videos of the toilet to YouTube for the benefit of the entire toilet community, if we're going to be honest. Well, does he want to be like a plumber? Or like, did his parents play Super Mario Brothers? <laughs> well... <laughs> <laughs> he was in utero. Like. That was the first one. Now I'm gonna go to the second bathroom. We got many more toilets to go. Hey, wh- whatever you do, don't picture his grandparents sitting on that toilet. <laughs> whatever you do. 
<laughs> don't do that. Don't think of that. <laughs> He's taking a walk. I'll fast forward a little bit. Okay, there we go. Now, this is a more modern toilet, for sure. But there's clutter. I don't like the clutter they got in there. There's nothing on here. I'm going to open the sister tank, too, and see if I can find anything. That's good. What's there's weird movie? haunted dolls that are not I being addressed. I think it's a doll, and then if you lift the skirt up, it's a, it's a roll of toilet paper. Oh, that's probably true. You could dunk the doll's head in the toilet. That could be fun. I don't think that's respectful to the toilet community. I uh, just, well, you know, test its capability. <laughs> That's weird. Okay, I'll just flush it. Wait, what happened? He can't open up the tank on this one. Oh, that's weird. It is weird. See, that's the thing. You, you know, more questions are raised than answered. Yeah. Right. In this, in this, uh, like man. a toilet seat. <laughs> it's, it's these, it stays raised. It is. Yeah. It's, I don't know. Um, I, th I encourage any young person with a passion. <laughs> I encourage you know. I I agree. Do is you? it any is it any stranger than collecting baseball cards or something like that? Well, <sighs> baseball cards are probably dirtier. Thank you. What? Thank you. Keep people, everybody touches them. Everybody, it doesn't clean them. The toilet them at there. some point, they're, someone's going to clean it. Yeah, they're putting the baseball yeah. cards in the spokes of a. Of a Would a you sit on a toilet made of baseball cards? Nope. Probably not. No, not. no, I wouldn't. Nope. I wouldn't. Hey, uh, and yeah, but encouraging. I don't know. If you put eight years into raising a kid and then he was just filming <laughs> toilets at your parents' house, you probably would feel like you screwed Gypped. up. Like, yeah. <laughs> don't, but don't you think it's a phase, too? Don't you just think it's like a thing that he's into for for now and and um, and then he'll he'll grow out of it? And... Yeah, probably. I mean, well, is he going to other people's houses and, and just, you know what I mean? I don't businesses know. This is why we need to showrooms. We need to infiltrate. Ferguson showrooms. <laughs> <laughs> the Craig, Craig Ferguson? Yes, yes, yes. What's this kid going to do like when he gets older and he's like starts going to Coachella and stuff? He's just going to Oh, like, those are that. that I would raise. That raises some real concerns in the toilet but This community. is the kid that would never go to Coachella, right? Because they're Porter Pines? No, what he, he probably would film one of them at least. <sighs> and it's not like. Like grandma cleaned all day to get ready for him. Those things are going to be a little more grizzly. Yeah. Yeah. It's going to be gotta... grizzly. Then he's going to watch Grizzly Bear at Coachella, and he's oh. going to have a nice tug. Oh, he's going to enjoy that. <laughs> I, I, but I do think, yeah, this this passion of his isn't going to make it past college because he's going to see a lot of toilets that turn him off to the to the whole thing. You know what? As you get older, you get exposed That's to... That's true. He's around clean toilets. Yeah. Okay, I see your point. Yeah. yeah. I get it now. It's, yeah. uh, you know... I just, I think he's a young documentarian. I think you have to be a little bit obsessive to be a documentary filmmaker. Okay. You have to be passionate about a subject. This is what he's passionate about now. All I'm right. curious. You don't know that Ken Burns wasn't, you know, filming right. toilets when he was sure, young. Sure, sure. Well, look at the great work he's done. Yeah. He'll, what will what will be his Fahrenheit 9-11 of toilets? Question. The yeah. Fahrenheit 9-11 of toilets. <laughs> he's got to go to Japan, right? They have the great public toilets there. They sure. have, like, public toilets that cost, like, $5 to get into because they're so nice. They Do they do that here? Because they should. I wish they did. I would pay a premium for a decent public toilet. Yeah. yeah. I would turn my bathroom into maybe a closet, and then I could just go use go the public use those. Toilet. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> In fact, Save I would. Room. If it's if it's if we're gonna if I'm gonna be a businessman about this, as you should, as I should, I'll turn my toilet that I have now, I'll do it up real nice. I'll invest some money. I'll charge uh -huh. people to use that. Because so, people, because people when they're at your house, they go, may I use the bathroom? Right. What if I was like, yes, absolutely. That'll be, that'll be $15. Yeah, but Jake, you're going to have to get you, the approval of your landlord. This could be more complicated than you think. Yeah. Well, I'm not speaking to my landlord since he's asked me to stop doing comedy acts in the backyard. <laughs> <laughs> so what are we into? Centuries! Oh, oh, I'm still a part of the toy link community. Flush, flush. I got a new dance called the Flush. Yeah. Laverne and Shirley had a cartoon show where they joined the army. Really? What? Oh, yeah. I'm just as shocked as you are. Uh, let's take a look at that. Uh, what are you up to, Penny? Well, I'm getting some... Uh... Laverne, let's join the army! The watch girl! By the way, that's all the exposition you need. Laverne, let's join the army. And we're in! <laughs> Where do I sign I up? I'm with one. you! Turn! A commanding pig? <laughs> Join the 
exist? Yes, it, it exists. And, yes. uh, and the, you, the, uh, the episode is Invasion of the Booby Hatchers. Um, yeah, let's just kind of go through this because there's a lot going on. First of all, Laverne says to Shirley, let's join the army. Right. And she's like, yeah, which is a drastic change for people that work in a bottling plant in Milwaukee. It is. Maybe they hit rock well, bottom. They follow orders. It's, uh, it's maybe like, a lot of hey, you know, you know basic what? movements. That's okay. the same year as Stripes, I'm thinking. Yeah, it's it's close to early it. '80s. Sunglasses. Whoa, whoa! Did you get right in here. That's right. What's this about? Listen, are we taking something? It's time on? to get serious in here. We're okay. putting something on. All right, yeah. All right, uh, hold on. Let's do it. Let's be. Uh, we gotta. Good, 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 good. Hey, so uh, let's get serious. I'm really curious to see what the Twitter reaction is to uh, to the sunglasses. If, if people want to tweet right now, it better be just good. Just let us know. Do you like uh, Do you like the sunglasses? Or are you a fan of this uh, uh, program where everyone was a little bit more laid back? Everyone was so 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 cool. Just this a is a, okay. this is a moodier thing we're doing okay. now. We're talking about Laverne and Shirley. Yeah, right. early eighties. You just watched them liberate space, so I don't know that. Well, that's could, the thing. That's it's hard to thing. argue with it's results. Not, I think it's pretty. It's pretty high concept. It's pretty high concept to have Laverne and Shirley join the army. Just at that, just at at the get go, that's pretty high concept. Right. But then there's also uh, a, a pig. Yeah. There's a, a commanding officer that's a pig. Uh, so that's that's right. So artistic that's license, social commentary. Yeah. Right. Uh, oh, you're right. It's social commentary. With the 1984 fast approaching, they thought they would throw in a little Orwell. They threw in a reference to Orwell. So that's we- so that's weird. And the pig is, it seems, really kind of angry with them because he's they don't they don't seem very. Yeah, but he's also very into them yeah. as well. Yeah. He's, that's social commentary. He's tough though. but fair. And um, and then at, at, apparently at some point, uh, they're they end up in space. They end up in space. Yes. As you are wont to do. Uh, there's, there's no air up there. And, and then I guess... <laughs> Just letting you know. Heads up. Yes. If, if you think about doing what they did, it may not be as easy as you think. <laughs> if you Tough. Because to, there might be some kids right now that are watching this and thinking, you know what? I'm going to join the army. That looks like a lot of fun. I want to meet a talking pig. Right. I want to go to space. Not not all it's cracked up to be. Right. You be careful what you wish for. And uh, I'll tell you, Kulop turned to me one day. She said, hey, let's join Earwolf. And I was like, okay. And, and we did it. And, you know, it's, it's, it's work. Here we are in space, guys. This yeah. is a spaceship. We do broadcast We're up from, in space. We podcast from space. <laughs> we did. Are we getting any reaction it's, on the shades? Let's see. I will see. Did We're getting... Say anything? Uh, don't like Howard Kramer shades. Deal with oh, don't like Howard Kramer shades? Question mark. Deal, deal with, with it. it. Ah. Yes. Uh, our friend Kick, uh, Kick Puncher, uh, Bruce, read it. Wrote glasses. Tell Howard to strike his. Oh, I guess he wants you to strike your glasses. Oh, okay, one to one right now. Okay, right. one one. Uh, let's see. Uh, Dave Bucar writes sunglasses are great, but the engineer needs some. Oh shit! Oh, Frank, you have sunglasses, Frank? Frank. I took yours. <laughs> oh, you took Frank's. Here, you can have them back. Oh wait, Br- uh, say Brandon uh, Leedy writes. Whoa, sunglasses on the Fogelnest files. Fingers crossed for a Corey Hart guest appearance. That'd be great. He wears his sunglasses at night. It's uh, it's almost uh, seven o'clock. It's getting to be nighttime. I'm gonna take mine off. All right, I'll take mine I wanna, off. I want to do more. Tie of this. goes to the runner. More of that. <laughs> Uh, I've talked about Bev and Bob on this show before. Uh, Bev and Bob are a couple. I don't know where they live in the United States, but they are living it up in the United States. And they are a couple that make karaoke videos. Very unique karaoke videos. I thought since we're doing uh, a video podcast uh, this episode, it might be fun for people that haven't seen Bev and Bob to see Bev and Bob. That'd and again, be- if you're listening to the audio podcast version of this, go over to youtube.com slash yearwolf because it's up there right now. You can watch it. This will be my first time with Bev and Bob. This is your and, and Me too, I think. This is Bev and Bob doing a karaoke cover of uh, the Clarence Carter song, Strokin'. <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> They're a lot of fun. So you're a BB. Oh, boy. When I start making love, <laughs> I don't just make love. I be stroking. That's more than I do. Yeah, I be stroking. I stroke it to the east, and I to the west. And I stroke it to the woman that I love. I'm in a thousand stroking. Let me ask you something. Who would you 
He needs to strike strike the shades. I <laughs> What's the matter? I don't know. I'm worried about them. And like, <laughs> They're fine. They're fine. They have hundreds of YouTube why, videos. Why They're, did they select macaroni and cheese as their background? Look, I, yeah, again, they good. have access to a green screen, and they're not afraid to use it, Bev and Bob. They always yeah, have so interesting what, patterns and things behind why them. Why do they cut off themselves like by the knees, too? So just... that's, that's a close-up of the hair on her face. <laughs> Sorry, that was mean. What's her name? Bev. Sorry, Bev. Bev and Bob are beloved institution of YouTube karaoke. Oh, they're like Marty and Elaine of the YouTube. They're the Marty and Elaine of YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> the people that don't know. Okay, well then I get it. Marty and Elaine. Do they still perform yes, at the Dresden? They yeah. certainly do. Oh, that's there. Yeah, Marty and Elaine are. They're in the movie Swingers, right? Yeah. Uh, yeah. I, I think they're in the. Yeah, if you've seen the movie Swingers, and I don't know why you haven't. Uh, they are in that. <laughs> get up on that. Yeah, get up on that. <laughs> Uh, yeah, they sing yeah, at a nightclub, uh, yeah, here in LA. In, in the yeah, on Vermont, there's a place called the Dresden Room, and they're like an old couple that does a duet of yeah. uh, covers in the lounge. And they're and they're classic. They're yeah. they're LA tradition. These guys are YouTube tradition. And what I, what I love about them is they are just they're clearly having so much fun. They really are so much in love with each other. Aww. You see the video. It's kind of sweet. It's okay, very I like sweet. It. And um and and they get good feedback. People leave them comments like please. Keep making videos, you guys. Oh, not me. Nice. I'm a, not, not me. I'm gonna sizzle their YouTube channel when I get home. What are you? Is that a on, term? You're gonna to I'm, sizzle. I'm it? gonna sizzle it. Howard, how is your sizzle reel coming together? By the way. <laughs> oh, my sizzler reel. You mean? It's your sizzler reel? Oh, wait. Yeah. It's just a series reels. of shots of me eating at different sizzlers different and uh, buffet items. <laughs> so you went a different way. A lot of people put together a sizzle reel because they want to show off like their their acting stuff and. Oh, that's kid stuff. Right. No, no, no. You you put together a sizzler reel. A sizzler reel, yeah. And it's just you enjoying steak. Yep. Absolutely. Maybe I'll get that kid to come film the toilets. <laughs> <laughs> you can't you can't film the toilets at a sizzler. They will they will throw you out. Yeah? Yeah. You don't want Who's to Who's watching those toilets? No <laughs> one's watching those toilets. I wonder if they got the same toilet at every sizzler. What do you think about that? Well, you think they'd buy them in bulk, right? Yeah. I mean, I don't know. I, I don't, you know, I don't know. I'll have to ask uh, my friend. I have a friend named Shep. He sells furniture to steak restaurants. Oh, wow. Does he really? No. Oh. <laughs> Shep sounds like an awesome guy. I got our last uh, clip, and it's a very special clip, which I've chosen in your guys' honor, because oh, yeah. you have the, the podcast, Who Charted? Charted? Which, is, uh, which is just a damn delight every Thanks. week. Thank you, Jake. Oh, I got an errant uh, follicle. Errant follicle. <laughs> Okay. Now it's good. We good? Yeah. We you. good? All right. My face is not proportionate to uh, my head. Go ahead. <laughs> it's too guys, big for my head. Go ahead. I, I thought I would show you. You have a great theme song to your show. Yeah. It's Adam Ant's Apollo, Apollo 9. 9. I get psyched Nine? up every week. I turn on Who Charted. Yep. I hear Adam Ant. Yes. And I get excited for charts. Charts. And friendship. But there's a great video for uh, Apollo 9. Have you, have you seen it? Uh, you have seen it. We've I've seen, seen it. it. Yeah, but uh, it's a great opportunity to show it to It's others. a great it opportunity is. to show it to everybody watching right now on the World Wide Weird. <laughs> <laughs> this, is the, uh, that. this is the theme song to, uh, to Who Charted, uh, the video for Apollo 9. By, uh, hey, does everybody want to see what's uh, in my, uh, my on my dock? What what applications it's I have on my dock? It's a sweet dock. dock. Yeah, it's yeah, a good dock, see. right? Yeah, it's thriving. Oh, yeah. God. All right. Apollo 9. Thriving dock. We should do the intro. <laughs> yeah. Do the intro, yeah. Mash up, here we go. Ma- yeah, here we go. It's a special episode of the Fogelnest Files. It's the first week of May. I'm your cuckoo, Cool Avi Lysak. Right across from me is your Jake. Next to Wee Wee, Howard Kramer. Hello, Cool Up. Hello, Jake Jake. <laughs> or Ja. Should I go just Ja? Ja, yeah. <laughs> it sucks I don't get to come in yet. I'm the guest. <laughs> Damn it. That's weird for you. Yeah. But this is great. This is everything you need in an 80s music video, right? That guy's got a star guitar. Yeah. Look, it's a star and a guitar. That's Marco, yeah. And then uh, that guy's got a leather cap. He's kind of wearing a space suit. Gee. But then also sort of business casual on business the Business casual space suit. 
And Tom Arnold is uh, <laughs> is at the at, at the controls. Snooze. Got a snooze button. That's the heaviest guitar you'll hear in the Adam and the Ant song. Will it really be, is, yeah. Will that lick be in Shredstaurant? Absolutely. <laughs> I have a big announcement about Shredstaurant. Oh, oh yeah. Boy. You want to make I, it? Yeah, go ahead. Should I, I'll make it right here on the Fogledest files, okay. live on VPN. All right, here we go. Announcing now for the bass enthusiasts. That's right, Slapsterant. Slapsterant. <laughs> wait, so wait a minute. It's it's bass themed. It's a bass themed restaurant. Okay, bass themed eatery. Please, get up and show us how this will go. Okay. Let me stay on mic. It's gonna be tough. This okay. is impromptu. Okay. Can you guys hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Okay, hey, welcome to Slapster Rock. Hey, what's up, man? Can I get you something to drink? Uh, yes, I would like a, uh, a Coca-Cola. Badow, badow, for cola. <laughs> <laughs> can <Excuse> I? <laughs> we'll get you that right out, sir. Okay. Nice. Yeah, right. please, nice. Man, what can I get you to eat tonight? Uh, mate, I was looking at your salad. Do you have a recommendation? I sure do. Bum, 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 I just ordered you a cob salad. <laughs> You'll love it. All right, guys, be right back. <laughs> so it's just your waiter comes over with a base. He does, and he orders your well, food. Well, it's, it's got a it's a point of sale system as well. It's exactly, a, it's <laughs> a custom made base that sends the order to the kitchen, wow. where our our uh, slap on chefs are waiting to fulfill the order. I, 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 what is your PayPal? I would like to invest. I mean, it seems oh. like it's crazy that Shredstaurant was so popular mm. that it it engendered. A completely a spin-off restaurant right. for basses. Well, what happened was we let we let a girl bass player work there. So, you know, a lot of people... Yeah. There's a lot up of, the biz. A lot of ladies, you know, Smashing Pumpkins. Octomar, uh, or what is it? Melissa, Melissa Octomar. Octomar, Octomar, yeah. Octomar, that's right. Is, and so uh, it became a popular thing, so we how about franchised this? it. Late, at nighttime at the Slapstaurant, okay? Yeah. You turn it into kind of a nighttime club thing. You call mm -hmm. it Octomars. Oh, I like it's that. It's just a lot. sort of it's got a it's got a vibe. You create a vibe to it. I like that a lot. How Off about this? Off to Mars PM Base Lounge. I love it. <laughs> How right. about Off Off to Mars After Hours? Oh, I like that. There we go. Combine them. How it a cool up? He's making a note of this. He's making Jake. A After <laughs> Mars PM He's making a note. <laughs> base Lounge. Um, we got. It. I think we did it. Thank did we? You. Did we, we lock it? We yeah. We we did it, you guys. Thank oh, you so much. Wow. For I have to say, this is one of the most fun podcasts I've ever done. I enjoyed it. Yes, I enjoyed great. all these clips. You're a great curator of these clips. Thank you so much. You know what? Uh, I, I've had fun on podcasts before, specifically ones that you guys host. Thank you. Boom. This is the best. We did it. Up Hi. top. Uh, I would like to uh, to thank everybody for watching this uh, this video podcast. It's going to be out as an audio podcast, too. If you're listening to this as an audio podcast, go to YouTube.com. It's AV. Audio you. visual. Audio visual. AV. It's, it's all coming together. Uh, this is Jake Fogelness saying, Seacrest out.